Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I hope everyone fine and doing well. This video is all about, the 10 best non-fiction books of 2021, so far. Nothing expands the mind, or the heart, quite like a superb work of non-fiction. But if you hear non-fiction and think dry as a bone, don't get it twisted. Non-fiction doesn't have to feel like homework, in fact, the very best of it can be just as much of a page-turner as a thriller. Before start this video, kindly subscribe to our channel. Ok let's get into the video. The Hard Crowd, by Rachel Kushner. Kushner's signature literary sensibility emerges and matures in this two decades long collection of cultural criticism, literary journalism, and memoir, all of it proof positive of her singular way of seeing. In these 19 forceful, blistering essays, Kushner turns her lens to everything from Jeff Koons to Dennis Johnson, Palestinian refugees to Italian radical politics, classic muscle cars to San Francisco's indie music scene. And yes, of course, there are motorcycles. Jackpot, How the Super Rich Really Live, and How Their Wealth Harms Us All, by Michael Mechanic. Have you done your part to rail against capitalism today? If you haven't, pick up Jackpot, Mechanic's meticulously reported guide to the opulent world of the ultra-rich, and you'll be seeing red in no time. Mechanic pulls back the velvet curtain on how our highest earners make, build, and hide their staggering wealth while also taking aim at the commonly held fantasy that hitting the jackpot would turn our lives to gold. With palpable glee, Mechanic lays out the lived reality behind the age-old truism that money can't buy happiness, just ask the bored, miserable, and spiritually bankrupt 0.01%. Character-driven and far more rollicking fun than it should be, this riveting guide to how the other half-lives illuminates how economic inequality leaves everyone worse off. An Ordinary Age, by Rainisford Stouffer all too often, we're told that young adulthood will be the time of our lives, so why isn't it? Stouffer explores the diminishing returns of young adulthood in this soulful book, providing a meticulous cartography of how outer forces shape young people's inner lives. From chronic burnout to the loneliness epidemic to the strictures of social media, an ordinary age leads with empathy in exploring the myriad challenges facing young adults, while also advocating for a better path forward, one where young people can live authentic lives filled with love, community, and self-knowledge. On Violence and on Violence Against Women, by Jacqueline Rose. No stone goes unturned in Rose's exhaustive inquiry into the enduring global crisis of sexual violence. Drawing on data and contemporary examples, while also braiding in the work of feminist philosophers like Judith Butler and Hannah Arendt, Rose builds a compellingly argued theory that sexual violence is rooted in male fragility. Rose's framework examines how systemic power structures reinforce themselves and how sexual violence intersects with gender, sexuality, race, and class. For anyone looking to educate themselves on this essential subject, start here and now. Last Call, by Elon Green. In this gripping true crime story about the last call killer, who preyed on New York City's queer men during the 80s and 90s, Green foregrounds the shamefully forgotten lives of the killer's known victims. Not only does he consider the profound losses carved out by their murders, but also the role of homophobia in shaping their lives and deaths. Green thoroughly sketches the queer bar scene of the era, ravaged by the AIDS crisis, and the law enforcement indifference that allowed the killer to lure men to their gruesome deaths. In these riveting pages, Green reclaims a time, a place, and a community, weaving together a decades-long forensic investigation with a poignant elegy to murdered men. A Swim in a Pond in the Rain, by George Saunders. Saunders writes in A Swim in a Pond in the Rain. It's perhaps the truest distillation of Saunders' visionary life and work, encapsulating the characteristic generosity and humanity of his artistic outlook. Saunders has spent over two decades teaching creative writing in Syracuse University's MFA program, where his most beloved class explores the 19th-century Russian short story in translation. In A Swim in a Pond in the Rain, Saunders has distilled decades of coursework into a lively and profound master class, exploring the mechanics of fiction through seven memorable stories by Chekhov. Tolstoy, Turgenev, and Gogol. In these warm, sublimely specific essays, Saunders' astounding powers of analysis come into full view, as does his gift for linking art with life. By becoming better readers, Saunders argues, we can become better citizens of the world. Under a White Sky, by Elizabeth Colbert. The Pulitzer Prize-winning author of The Sixth Extinction returns with another sobering look at our Anthropocene epic, this time centered not on the countless calamities ahead but on the trailblazing efforts of scientists to turn back the doomsday clock. 
Colbert describes the subjects of Under a White Sky as people trying to solve problems created by people trying to solve problems. She turns her lens to human interventions in nature, like the storied redirection of the Chicago River, and to the pressing need for further intervention to correct our folly. Traveling everywhere from the Great Lakes to the Great Barrier Reef, she chronicles her encounters with scientists, who are pioneering cutting-edge technologies to turn carbon emissions to stone and shoot diamonds in the stratosphere. Heralded by everyone from Barack Obama to Al Gore, Colbert's urgent, deeply researched text asks if our ingenuity can outrun our hubris. Surviving the White Gaze, by Rebecca Carroll. Carroll's searing memoir recounts her complicated childhood as the only black person in a rural New Hampshire town, where even the love of her adoptive white parents could not answer the incompleteness within her. When her white birth mother renders the picture to cruelly undermine Carroll's blackness and self-worth, the aftershocks reverberate across Carroll's lifetime, sending her spiraling through a pattern of self-destructive behaviors in search of her racial identity. In this vulnerable and layered meditation on race, adoption, and family, chosen and otherwise, Carolyn Spool's a poignant story of becoming. We Had a Little Real Estate Problem, by Cliff Nesterov. Nesterov traces the long and shameful marginalization of Native American comedians in this deeply researched volume, beginning as early as the 1800s, when Native Americans were forced to perform as caricatures of themselves in traveling Wild West shows in order to avoid imprisonment. The book toggles between historical analysis and modern-day interviews with emerging Native comedians, who are struggling to break into show business amid the dearth of opportunities on reservations. Nesterov also deconstructs caricatures of Native Americans as stoic people, highlighting an irreverent and often hilarious chorus of voices aching to be heard. Read an exclusive excerpt here at Esquire. Craft in the Real World, by Matthew Salesis. In this firmament-shattering examination of how we teach creative writing, Salesis, a novelist and professor, builds a persuasive argument for tearing up the rule book. Tracing the traditional writing workshop to its roots in white, male cultural values, Salesis challenges received wisdom about the benchmarks of good fiction, arguing that we must reimagine how we write and how we teach. Only then will our canon and our classrooms be the inclusive, expansive spaces we want them to be. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Have a great day! Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay connected as Dag learned something. Bye.